masters and guests. Today I'm going to be the Toastmaster of the day and I'm going to handle all the meeting structure and invite speakers and other role takers. And uh, usually we choose some specific topic for the meeting. And for today we choose the topic of professional development. And uh, why we decided to take this topic for today specifically? Because, uh, as we discovered some interest from our members to socialize and networking and get to know each other better, we discovered that uh, we don't even know very well who is doing what. And uh, so our today's meeting will be dedicated to uh, our professional interests and our professional development. And with this, I would like to invite uh, one of our first role takers, who is going to set the mood for today. It's our joke master, Kirill. What do you know about Kirill? Who knows uh, where Kirill is working? <laughs> who is Kirill professionally? Kirill is a salesman and now he's our joke master. Dear Toast Busters, now I'll tell you a little story, a little romantic story with a didactic ending. Uh, not long after, uh, not, not long after having graduated from high school, I was in a train trip from the Urals to Moscow. The time I was a singer in a Nevada choir. So twenty handsome young men, including myself. 20 sophisticated young women in a rusty iron bucket. Well, what did they do there? Uh, they played cards. So I was involved in a card game uh, where you have to name the next player to pass the move. Uh, in front of me there was sitting uh, the most sophisticated and intelligent woman in the car and her name was Mila. Uh, the thing is that uh, I was pretty much embarrassed but I had to pass my mood so I decided to pass it to her. But uh, as I was embarrassed I forgot her name. So uh, I said, well <laughs> it's your turn. But my name is Mila, said Tanya. Uh, okay, uh, then I said, I played Marshall, and I said, from now on, you'll be Tanya. In that case, Kirill said, freshly baked Tanya, from now on, you'll be Kola. That's how uh, I realized that the match role is uh, probably not the best role for every issue. For every meeting we usually have uh, some special organizational roles which help to hold the meeting and watch out some specific things. And the first of these roles is the grammarian and word master role. And the person who took this role today shared with me that uh, his professional field is uh, chemical transportation. And uh, he usually gets his professional development from his everyday job. And our grammarian for today is Maxim Ushenin. Good evening, dear friends. Since we are talking about professional development tonight, it's very important when you're developing in your profession to know the rules. At least to know when you can break them and violate them. So I will be looking for your grammar tonight. I will be picking up uh, some mispronunciations, some not correct usage of words, but I also will look for good usage of language. So please do your best. And as for the word of the day, I suggest quite a simple word, but very themed for tonight. To promote. 
usually it's uh, thought to be pure marketing word to promote some idea, to promote some project, uh, promotion, promo, but this also relates to our professional growth. For example, a young staff was promoted to a manager in just three years. Uh, also promote means to help something. For example, hard working will promote to your professional growth. So we use this word as much as possible and by the end of the meeting we'll count with the best today. Thank you. Important role for our meeting is a counter. And the person who was promoted to be an accountant for today is Anton Boyka. And today my role is accountant. I can't very well and I think I will do it very good. Many listeners during speech pronounce sounds and words which can be annoying and annoying that to listeners. It could be an interjections, different interjections like as, such, and, but. Also it could be sounds like air, am, and like that. So during your speech please be clear as possible. If you take a rest, and sometimes silent is better than than different sounds. Thank you. And one of the main people for our today's meeting, because we have a very tough agenda with four speeches and many other interesting things. Uh, we have a timer, and the timer for today shared with me that his professional field is programming and team management. So far, he was developing himself, himself in technical skills, uh, but now he's focusing more on developing soft skills, and that's also why he came to Toastmasters, and uh, I invite here Artyom. and uh, write correctly your names, surnames, uh, and not be very annoying with uh, these boards. Uh, <laughs> but because they, I, I think they can be pretty much hidden when you are talking right here, you are like, in a, uh, you are like flowing with your speech. So, and here I am, red, red, you need to finish. Uh, that's all I see. Thank you, Artyom. We are going to move to the part of prepared speeches, which is one of the main parts of our meeting. And before calling to the stage our first speaker, Irina, I would like to say that Irina is working in IT investment and she likes taking challenges. And her first uh, challenge in Toastmasters is going to happen today uh, because today Irina is going to deliver her icebreaker to us. It's the first speech and so I would like to ask all the audience to listen carefully to Irina and support her with, with your careful listening. So uh, I invite to the stage Irina Baskova. Do you believe 
that you can change the world. Just raise your hand. Change the world? Yes. <laughs> Group, two, I see, great, okay. And uh, who has a dream? Wow, I love you guys. <laughs> and who work every day to make your dream to come true? <laughs> okay, great. I'm a believer and I'm a dreamer. <laughs> That's uh, all about my life. And first, of, uh, I, I want to, talk, to tell about three things that I believe. Uh, I believe in that everything is possible. It's the first thing that I believe. And uh, I believe that there is no borders and no limits. And uh, to be uh, honest, I hate borders. So probably that's why I hitchhiked more than 40,000 kilometers uh, and it was one of the best experiences in my life. Uh, when I was young, I was 19 and I came to my mom and said that I'm going to hitchhike to Baikal Lake with 500 rubles. She said that I'm crazy, and <laughs> but, I, or, but I did that. <laughs> And I hitchhiked from Los Angeles to New York with uh, only one dollar. I traveled and hitchhiked in Mongolia, Kamchatka, Europe and uh, all other world. <laughs> and probably that experience showed me that the world is so different, that people are so great and really everything, everything, everything is possible. Um, the second thing I believe is uh, that uh, dreams must become goals and this is the way to find uh, your own mission in the world. Um, so probably that's why I created content for five election campaigns. Uh, um, I started from politics uh, and then I raised money uh, uh, for more than uh, I think 10 startups and it's 12 million dollars. Um, then uh, I built three museums and developed seven uh, mobile entertainment uh, appli uh, applications and games. I'm a plus, si plus size model <laughs> and I work uh, in this year too and I sing in musical. So probably uh, that's, I always try to find the way uh, to make my dream to come true. Uh, and uh, probably that's why I jumped from the plane more than 900 times. <laughs> um, and the third thing that I believe is uh, that support can help to overcome everything in this uh, world and life. I did so many mistakes and uh, people from all over the world, from Los Angeles to uh, uh, Mongolia and Kamchatka, they saved me so many times and they supported me even in my craziest ideas. Uh, for example, a year ago I lost uh, my business, mm, uh, I had a uh, digital agency uh, for outsource uh, IT development and uh, I lost uh, almost all my money and, and uh, my team too, it's, it's not so big money, it's just like 7 million rubles, but it's not a lot, but it was so uh, stress <laughs> stressful. <laughs> Uh, but now uh, I know what does it mean when people around me support support me even when I'm in the worst condition. So that what I want to say to you that I want you all to dream, to work hard, to make your dreams to come true, and to find people who will support you. So and be uh, that change you want to see in the world. Just be yourself. And this second video... <laughs> <laughs>
I encourage you to believe in yourself and live your life in the future. <laughs>
and with that band we do perform jazz and once a year we actually do that for you those masters as our annual visit to here to Moscow to make some kind of fusion between the those masters and the jazz. <laughs> Made on those masters can I use it for a little ad? We are going to make it this year as well, sometime around winter. So if you are interested to help me with coordination of the event, please approach me after. Back to the project. My fourth priority is the another guess. Exactly. <laughs> so which means that I intentionally would like to dedicate part of my time to be with you, to develop myself as a better communicator and develop myself as a better leader. And what comes last and not least, this is my fifth priority, which completes the list, which is actually well-being. Yeah. To have an energy to cover every, all, all the stuff, you have to exercise yourself, you have to spend time to uh, recreate, and things like that. How do I use the system? If you don't practically use the system, you quickly find that your higher priorities hit your lower priorities every day. So what I intentionally do, I schedule the time. I have my one hour with those masters every two weeks. This, this hour is blocked, and even priority is number four. It's still on the list, and I am here with you today, and I'm going to be here with you today. If I would like to do my music twice a week, I schedule the time for the twice a week. Of course, things happen, and high priorities may still be the lower priorities, but in, in that case, there is something to move. Actually, the system works that I don't not surprise if my well-being and sport activities are out of agenda all this week because I had to prepare for my project today, for example. So this is something which I may not like, but this is what I understand, and as a result, I can manage this. To finalize, for me, it was the rainy day when I developed the five priorities for me. And if that moment comes to you, my fellow tools masters, I'm hoping that my story about my life priorities will help you to build your own priorities and navigate your choices to make the most of your time on the planet. Those two speeches prove to us that everything is possible if you work hard. And let's uh, dedicate a bit of work to our speakers and fill this form for Mikhail as well. Your feedback is valuable for Mikhail. And after you finish, you can write Mikhail's name on this paper and pass it to him directly. Please finish with your evaluations. And now we are ready to move on with our prepared speeches. And our next speaker, when I ask her about uh, how she develops herself professionally, said me, how I develop professionally? Just do it. And uh, with this, I, uh, I invite our next speaker, Maria Kalinkina. It was a board. 
Microsoft Word <laughs> to write your ideas. Of course, create idea and be the fan of your idea. If we want to make the vision for Lisa a reality, we got to put in the hours and make something cool. Yeah, but we have a hard day on this software, and I'm sorry, but adding pretty fonts is not going to change that. Well, if you don't share our enthusiasm and care for the vision of this company, no, 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 no. I just, I, I'm not understanding. Yeah. What? Get your shit. Yeah. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> what are you, are you getting fired? No! I already fired you! Why are you still here? Okay, so I guess you know from what movie it was a fragment. It was a movie about Steve Jobs. And you should think about your idea from the morning till the midnight. The second, it is education. One soldier in the field, you should be the ready for that because you never know what destiny's gifts you will get. And you should be ready. Education is the first. It is a way of myself to understood it. So you can study by yourself, find all the information everywhere. Uh, because we live in the century of possibilities, the century of opportunities, in books, in people, in traveling. So just explore and be proactive. Promote yourself. The third one, it is networking. What is it? Actually, I googled. So, word is an answer. It is a connection, the connection of several. Work, I hope you know what does it mean, work. But each of us has our own opinion and meaning about this word. For me, it is an opportunity. For me, it is a friendship. For me, it is a support. It is a kind of support. So, the theory of six handshakes, it is also about networking. The fourth, it is energy and sport. Business is the best sport. The most part of successful persons that I met, they were very sporty. That because sport is an energy. Frankly, all the business based on the energy. You should find it everywhere. All the life based on it. So just find the way how to work over your energy. And uh, for me, it's the cheapest energy and sport that I found. It is running. So it is just you, your sneakers, bounty, and the road. Just do it. And the fields and the last one, what do you think it should be? Respect yourself. Sorry, what do you want to say? Okay, come on. <laughs> okay, respect yourself in the end. Never enough, it is a stable kind of feeling of a proactive person, of course. But also you should find the time just for you. Just to take a breath and relax. To reload your computer for a little, or not for a little. So be, be grateful to your body because it is a temple and you are the guest in this temple. Don't forget about it. Relaxing, it sounds simple and easy, but it's also a kind of work. The most part of people could not to relax, neither do I. So please enjoy the moment and stay conscious. Promote yourself. It was some advices to support today's meeting topic. So guys, keep calm and don't blink. <laughs> Thank you. And now we are going to have one more minute of evaluating Maria's speech. And if someone is missing this kind of papers, you can raise your hand and I will give you some free papers. Please finish with your evaluations. And we are ready to move to our next speaker. And she shared that uh, her project will be uh, related as well to her professional development and uh, to develop herself. She takes some ad hoc courses, internship, and she does research projects. And her professional field is machine learning and bioinformatics. And today she's going to talk about machine learning. And uh, I would like to ask the audience 
uh, to do one important thing during this project. While Anya will be speaking, she will expect some questions from the audience during her speech. So please take it into account and I invite Anna Leoznova. Thank you. Uh, for the rest of the audience, I have good news. You are probably going to learn something new. And you guys, I will need your help soon, so stay tuned, please. Uh, I want each one of you, regardless of your answer, to think whether machine learning have helped you today. Please take a moment to think whether something in your life today, just today, was accelerated by the machine learning or something like that. Just think about it. Okay, so machine learning is a field of study that uh, gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. I'm surprised that there are no questions from you, but I'll explain. And the typical idea of programming is the following. You have to say to the computer strictly what to do. For example, if you see a fruit which is yellow in that shape, then probably it is a banana. And you have to, to write this to the program, to the computer. On the other hand, there is another idea about how we learn. For example, this pe these children, they are learning alphabet. And nobody has never told them that what letters are. For example, take a look at this letter. This is the green one. And this is the right one. But I suppose that everybody here guesses that both of them are K. How do we do that? Actually, the answer is that we have seen this K for many, many, many times in different shapes, colors, and so on. Now, this is an exercise which is a little more harder for you. What about this alphabet? This is Hebrew, and here is the alphabet. And is it really easy for you to spot the letters here. Just take a moment to look. And what if I will show you more books in Hebrew? Just imagine what will happen if you will read like thousands of books, you write thousands of letters in Hebrew, then probably it will be much more easier for you to spot the letters here, right? It is learning by doing, learning by experience, by aggregating data. So, from my point of view, machine learning is everywhere. For example, it helps us to search for things. It obviously helps us to recognize voice and to construct voice. Self-driving cars. New speeds at our social media. Uh, films recommendations. Our credit card safety, weather forecasts, drug discovery. What else? I asked you to think about how did it help you today. So, can you give any examples? I use the navigator to get here. Like Great. That. Something else. Google. Alisa. Yeah, obviously, good one. <laughs> Google. Yeah, sure. A lot of machine learning at Google. It's a swipe, you know, a, a keyboard in a smartphone. Yeah, they do, yeah, um, for sure. So we can see there are a lot of applications. Now I want to give a very, very brief example of how does it work from the inside. So machine learning tries to aggregate a lot of data and to split the whole thing, the whole problem, to small ones. For example, if it wants to uh, to find something on the picture, then it will the computer will have to see millions of pictures, and it will try to find some uh, some less complex things than a picture itself. For example, if we it is looking for the car, it will start 
from trying to find some, you know, angles, circles, and so on. Then it will try to combine it to some more di difficult shapes. And finally, it will try to find circles, maybe windows, and so on. And nobody programs it. Yeah, you're welcome. And what does the skin at the bottom of your slide demonstrate? Well, <laughs> actually, this is a neural network, and this is the approach which is used for uh, for this type of tasks. So, and here is a small example of how does it work. Uh, so this is called filter, and you may think of it as a small eye which is looking for some concrete thing. For example, uh, there is a filter which is looking for this line, and it scans the entire picture for the line. And there it is the hierarchy of such filters, and so the first, the lower ones, they scan for very, very basic constructions, and the upper ones scan for more complex things, for example, for a window, or, I don't know, banana, or something. And then, uh, based on uh, their prediction, uh, the computer decides about the entire image. Uh, in this example, uh, do you uh, uh, do you try to uh, uh, to tell us that all those um, all those small uh, how to say it? filters? No, okay, yeah. okay all those works. small filters will filter uh, consequently or uh, or in parallel. Well, I think that it depends on the on the machine in which you are running. The idea is just to, to know the answer for every one of them. So it doesn't matter whether you can do it consistently or not. Just you need to know the answer for each one of these filters. And when you, when you know the answer, you can apply more higher filters, higher level filters. Okay? Now I have one more question which is a bit different from the previous one. Can you think about some problem that is not solved by machine learning yet? Some complex problem which is not solved or maybe cannot be solved. And here, guys, who told me that you know everything about machine learning, I want you to think with me whether we can solve this problem. So any idea of something which is not solved? Maybe you should give some inputs to the program in order to get some results at the end. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so we can do it without any red sample. Guys, who knows about machine learning? Can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Okay, do you mean that we uh, will try to find but something that we don't know in data or uh, or in something different? Uh, can you say I, I mean, uh, do you mean that we will try to find the pattern in the data that we don't know exists or no, so we don't know what we are going to find, what we are going to find? That's, no. that's the idea, that you do not have to explicitly say what you are looking for. This is a very general idea of this approach. And now I'm asking whether there are some problems that cannot be solved. Well, it's not really a problem that still can be solved by artificial intelligence is not solved by machine learning. Can it, is, uh, it can I don't think uh, it can be solved right now because uh, we lack methods to create uh, a creativity. Uh, right now machine learning is just a method of uh, learning from data but uh, we can't uh, give machines uh, an insight to do something. Uh, right now, we just like it. we just like uh, like information. Maybe there's some room for the dog. So the, there can't also be made an automatic system which is searching for vulnerabilities in uh, information services. Like uh, there is no electronic system which can do things that people do by hand. What do you think? Can we invent such a system? I think yes. <laughs> what do we need for that? Hmm? What do we need for this? Uh, 
better algorithms and better quality of uh, forces. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I want to say my comment is that machine learning applies to very, very different problems, and many problems can be solved with this. And the key nowadays, as you mentioned, is to this is data. So the more data we have, the more problems we can solve. And now I want to give you two tips how you can contribute. For those of you who think that you are an expert of machine learning, I highly recommend you to sign up for Kaggle. It is an online competition where you can sign up and compete with top scientists in solving real-life machine learning problems. And for everybody of us, I want you to sign up for Kalaka.yandex.ru. It is a platform for uh, which uh, which helps computers to aggregate data. So if you sign up for this project, you will see some simple tasks uh, like which uh, uh, search query, uh, which answer to the search query is better, or what do you see in the picture, and so on. You will not only earn money, you will earn money for that, but also you will uh, significantly, significantly help all the community to aggregate that data. And that means that you will help to make our algorithms better and your life easier because these algorithms help you and your life every day. Thank you. And now the part of prepared speeches is over. And I guess all of us have a lot of thoughts in our heads about what was spoken here. So now we are moving to a break. We have some bananas and water here. And so let's talk to each other, network and discuss what we've heard. The break is 10 minutes. That's all. Actually, this is uh, a famous part of the meeting for me, actually, tabletop session where everyone can participate and uh, try to make a speech impromptu. I remind your rules. Uh, when, I point you out, when I point you out, please come to the stage, uh, write your name on the desk. And you, you will have uh, 30 seconds to think and two minutes to speak. Uh, for tonight, I prepared some questions for you. And uh, as Sasha said, uh, we have professional uh, main, table, main topic of the meeting. And I've got uh, some kind of weird questions from the interview. And for instance... <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if your job gives you a surprise, three days paid break to rest and re recuperate, what would you do with those three days? <laughs> if your job gives you a surprise and three days off, what would you do with those three days? For instance. So. Okay, let's start. You will see all these questions. Uh, newcomers in our priority, but. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most interesting building you've ever seen or been in? I don't need 30 seconds to think, I'll be thinking on my feet. What is the most interesting building I've ever been in? There are positive, interesting buildings or buildings positive, interesting in positive way, there are buildings interesting in negative way. One of interesting enterprises buildings or whatever 
I, I've been in was a cafe in Abkhazia. It was a nice cafe. Tables all that. Until I asked where the toilet was. And they showed me where the toilet was. I, I went there. And there, <laughs> there was a water hose. Really, water hose. And a hole in the ground. And that's it. It was really an unusual building. Regarding one of the most beautiful buildings I have been, well, I, I, I'm not in. I haven't been traveling at all. But I have to say about, have to mention Astakinske Tower. Well, it's a pretty cool place. You go there, it's high up, you can see all the Moscow, you can imagine you can see your house back in Zinograd. <laughs> if you have one. And I'm not promoting Astankinske Tower, but it's still worth going there. And the floor is, is out of glass. You, you stand there, you look down, and you're really scared. It's cool. So, toilet in Anafazi in Astankinske Tower. Go there. <laughs>
and that could not be compared with our for uh, you know, one side. And we will have a classical challenges that we all have. That's what uh, the challenges that we have to uh, the decision that we uh, must do in our lives. And uh, this, so on and so on. So, so thank you. Thank you. I listen to our speakers and I think uh, the questions to see we need to find out something more funny. If you don't mind, I give you a question. Oh, no, not my nice selection. <laughs> uh -huh. What animal would you hustle if scaled down uh, to the size of the cat? What's the Russian for cats? What's the Russian for cats? If you have a chance to make any animals more small like a cat, what would you do? Oh, when I was a child, uh, one, one of my favorite uh, cartoon movie was uh, um, Barankin Good Chalavekam. <laughs> that, that was a nice movie, a uh, nice cartoon about, uh, uh, maybe, maybe not all of you uh, saw that, that cartoon movie, but uh, 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 the, uh, the, the guy uh, uh, moved to be a, um, a net. Uh, uh, and, 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 you, you saw this, yes, yes, and that was a great one, because I think, uh, I think that's, that's excellent opportunity, because what I learned from the, uh, uh, from the science article, uh, ants are very smart, they are incredible smart, and I think it's, it's opportunity for me to be smarter when I'm going to be an ant, so that's, uh, that's I think, a, a great opportunity. So thank you for this. I would like to uh, investigate it further and promote to be and because they are really, really smart and that such team uh, work uh, very efficiently. Uh, so now for Nico. <laughs> Size bag. What would you pack? Right. So I'm moving to another country, and the only thing I got from my family, who who's still here, in the, my big flat where lots of my belongings stay, is the only this smaller bag. And the only thing I, I could take from my belongings was the Let's take a look. Toothbrush. Because nobody needs that in my... who, who stay in, 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 the, in, the, in the city. And what, what, what was that? A socks? Socks! Really, that's an important thing. And, and again, that's because they don't need it. What else? Oh, that's my wallet. Let's take a look. Hmm. Okay. It's a wallet. And wallet is a very important thing because all my documents, all my passport, and potentially all my money can sit in it. So that's uh, the belonging I take from me when I left my home. If you were given $5 million to open a small museum, what kind of museum would you create? Oh, <laughs> I was thinking about uh, to create a museum of artificial intelligence. <laughs> I have, I still have this project. 
with uh, one of the most famous Russian uh, company in artificial intelligence, cognitive technologies. They create the mind for the auto cars. Oh, yeah. And the second project, it should be for kids uh, for sure. We, and uh, I have the second project for kids. It's um, Alice in Wonderland uh, Edutainment Park. So, um, this is, this is uh, <laughs> like a two dream projects for me for now. What movie can you watch over and over without ever getting tired of? Well, you heard my story about the priorities. And maybe I can use this time to test how successful I was. What is my first priority? Work. Indeed, work. I go to work to get lots of money to make a better tomorrow. And to make lots of money, I need to climb the corporate ladder. And how do you do that? By watching other successful people. And that reminds me of the person which I knew some time ago in my life. Very successful manager of the company. And actually sometimes uh, recalling the experience knowing him as a movie, which I'm watching over and over again without being tired. When he arrived from the US to Russia to be a big boss of the company, he took actually a couple of things with him and his suitcase probably and put them to the desk. The first one was the little something with the title Bullshit Recorder. I think he was going to use it with me when I was going to speak with him in the company. So the second one, he took the box of the chocolate bar Snickers because that was his way to give a feedback during the presentation. If he didn't really like what he said, he was throwing the Snickers bar to the person. And uh, uh, that was his, his way of doing it. And the last thing, which is in the movie, is that the only moment when everybody was happy about him, that was his last day in the company. So that's the type of the movie which I'm watching and watching and watching, and I'm not sure I will try by using the bullshit repellent sneakers bars and uh, saying bye-bye to the people to make my successful career. Mr. Table Topic. This is the last one for Alex. Special question for Alex. Could you give me a sermon in any answer? Write the question. Read the question. Do you think that Aryans exist? E L I E N S. Exist? <laughs> I'm sure that uh, they are not exist uh, and uh, I uh, heard uh, one interesting idea that uh, if uh, uh, someone exists in space uh, maybe we couldn't uh, have contact with him uh, because uh, how we can't uh, we have we, we can't have contact with another animals uh, and uh, uh, maybe someone is exi exist. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what weird food combinations do you really enjoy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, telling honestly, uh, don't be afraid. Ready? Um, cakes with garlic. Because I enjoy both sweet foods and sharp ones. Garlic, onion, etc. Okay. Uh, 
etc. So let it be cakes with garlic. Okay? <laughs> I, I am brief. Well, uh, nothing more to say. Thank you so Excellent much choice. for finally, finally uh, uh, appreciated my being uh, stubborn. Okay. Should I specify my name? When you become a Toastmaster, and you've been a Toastmaster, Toastmaster for some time, you don't even notice it, but you start promoting Toastmasters to your friends, family members, and people you don't even know, in Metro or whatever. And whenever you promote Toastmasters, you usually say, people learn how to make speeches there. Speakers, at least for me, are the most important part of Toastmasters. Thus, we have to treat them in a special way. And we treat them by evaluating the speeches and we have special people for every speaker. And Irina, with her super energetic speech about herself, will be evaluated by Alexandra Yekbovich. Mr. General Elator, dear Toastbusters, Toastmasters and guests. Wow. This is the first project, the Icebreaker. The purpose of Icebreaker is to introduce yourself to the audience and show the, or learn the basic structure of a public speech. Well, what can I say? Irina introduced herself. Do you agree with me? Yeah? yeah? Please raise your hand who agrees with, with me. Well, the most of the audience. What did we learn? That Irina is traveling a lot, that she likes hitchhiking, mm -hmm. that she's a plus size model, wow, that she sky, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 900 times you did skydiving from the plane, wow. And also that you are supported by by different people around you, not in our country, but abroad as well. That's a lot of information. Also, what I liked. The idea of introducing and closing your speech with two readers was something fresh and new. And it involved everyone in the audience. Um, I cannot say that in the beginning, it was uh, in the beginning it was very interesting. In the end, it's uh, a little bit conflicted with the with your closure, but all in all, it was expressive, and it gave us some ideas about you. Uh, what I also liked, you told me uh, before your speech that you were very nervous, but when you came here, you managed to overcome your nervousness and make it an emotional speech. So I didn't see any trembling hands, or I don't know, looking under your legs on the floor. This is good, you were natural. I also liked your Walk, um, I know I can't say vocal right, but I liked the tone of your voice. You were loud and you were understandable. Well, to speak about things that could be done better in the future, I think, uh, and you will have plenty of projects for that and plenty of time for it to work with your scripts and with the structure of the speech. What I mean is uh, the conclusion, um, I'm sorry, the introduction with the main idea, the body, with several things that you want to tell your audience, and the conclusion that uh, wraps all the idea, and again, talk about, tell us what you want to say. Uh, today it was a little bit messed up, I think it was because you 
Oh no, you were nervous. But we come again to good things. You did your first step. You showed us what you know, what you can do, and what you can do with what you have on your hands. I mean, with uh, your emotional impact, with your language, and that you're not afraid of visual aids. Well, welcome to the club. Welcome to Toastmasters, and I can I congratulate you with your first project, the icebreaker. I will briefly evaluate and evaluate if I think I have something to say about it. And nice evaluation, nice positive evaluation, two things I noticed. Now firstly, firstly, it's important to control your vocal variety and pauses to be specific. Let me give you an example. You said, I cannot say in the beginning it was really interesting. So you probably started one idea, I cannot say, then you change your mind. In the beginning it was really interesting. But it sounded like, I cannot say it in the beginning it was really interesting. Mind your walk right, mind your poses. And the second one is, when you say something like your structure was a little bit messed up, it's good to give specific examples. Because if you just say your structure was a little bit messed up, the speaker might either reject your suggestion because it doesn't have any specifics to it, or he will be puzzled, like, what is wrong with me, or whatever. Be specific. The second evaluator of the spe second speaker is Dmitry Protesnik, if I remember correctly. Dear fellow members and guests, dear Mikhail, I would like to congratulate you with your second ice-breaking uh, project. I think it was really nicely done. And uh, the topic of icebreaker project is to introduce yourself, firstly, and secondly, to learn the basic structure of a public speech. And being an experienced member, I'm pretty sure that you uh, managed to meet these objectives. And in doing so, I would like to point to areas which I personally liked uh, about your project and about your presentation. So first one is one of the basic um, public speaking skills is body language. And this is what I think you uh, improved during your journey in Toastmasters, because your uh, body language was smooth, it wasn't excessive, it was natural, and I think that natural it is uh, what is the most important uh, thing about body language. Secondly, I liked the choice of uh, the topic, because it helped you to uh, meet the objectives. Because uh, having, this, having five priorities, uh, it was uh, easier to introduce yourself and to structure your speech as well. Anyway, as for experienced member, I have some things, uh, some points for improvement, as always. And the first one is about timing of your speech, about timing of different parts of your speech. I will show. So, uh, firstly, you had introduction, then you had body, with points like uh, work. Then it was family, then it was music, then it was those masters, and at the end it were some activities. Oh, <laughs> activities. And uh, the third one was conclusion. So I think in terms of timing, uh, there were too much first part. Because in your introduction it was really long about cafe, all the details, it was nicely done, but I think that you, uh, you, uh, use some time from the uh, main part by making your introduction uh, more, uh, by making it longer. So then you had work, and about work you just said a uh, few things, then you had uh, family as well, then you had music, more time about music, then uh, Toastmaster and activities. And actually it was uh, a very short and concise introduction which I liked. So I think, uh, and from this I'm going to the second point, that you could uh, uh, use 
my short introduction, you could elaborate in these parts. Because uh, in self-introduction, I personally, and I think that people in the audience would like to know more about your work, and I think that you could actually name the company where you're working, uh, about your family, about some other activities, because it's interesting for, for the audience. All in all, I think that you have all the qualities and skills for being a prominent speaker, especially in your path dynamic leadership. You just need sometimes to have more priorities for Toastmasters and uh, to find more time to polish your speeches and to uh, have a better time. So be a good speaker, be a good leader, good luck. You witnessed evaluation by Mitri Trapeznikov. He's a very experienced evaluator. I really like his evaluation. But since he's the experienced, I want to point something. <laughs> Introduction. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> and it's real. People are laughing because probably agree with me. Awesome, awesome evaluation. I loved it. I loved how you use the visuals. But why do you have to spend time on the introduction for the first project, blah, 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 you repeat the project, cut it. There was not much useful material in it. And if it wasn't for the long introduction, you could have delivered a winning area level evaluation. Very good job, but one year old type. The third evaluator is Takeda Gladstone, if I remember correctly. Dear fellow Toastmasters and guests, dear Masha, thank you very much for delivering an interesting project. I'm not sure if it's a secret or not, but I was asked to give a nice evaluation, and I, that's why I will start with listing your strong size and um, interesting uh, good techniques you used while you, while you prepare your <laughs> presented your speech, so you can use them for become a better speaker. Firstly, your project fit great, fit perfectly into the topic of the meeting. You gave us a few useful ideas, how to accelerate ideas, like this, how to accelerate ideas. Then I like the way you, ex you interacted with the audience. You looked very confident, you asked questions, you gave hints, you accepted answers, incorporated them into your presentation, and that looked very smooth. So that is a, that I, I think this is your strongest skill, I noticed. Now let me um, list a couple of things I would like you to work on. The first and the very bad one is using notes for project nine, number nine. You should be able to evaluate notes, usage of notes at all. And as a result, you had a poor eye contact. So you always scanned your, your, your script. The other thing I would like to mention is that you jumped from point to point while delivering your speech. So the, the other words, the um, connection of your parts of your speeches were not, the connections were not very smooth. And last thing I would like to mention is the try to minimize or at least structureize usage of um, video or the um, video <laughs> visual aids. <laughs> we should be talking about the usage of visual aids. The the time when you showed the uh, movie about uh, Steve Jobs. I, I didn't watch the movie. I haven't watched it, and I didn't didn't understand why you using why you showing it to us. And after you explained what what's the movie about, I still didn't get the point of showing it to us. So try to explain it or incorporate it somehow, like in the better understandable way. I, I'm showing you this because of this and so steps. Yeah, but I mean, I still didn't get it. Like, okay, text, so what? I mean, maybe it was only me. But overall, it was a good project. Very good for number nine. <laughs> so <laughs> I pass you to number 10, and I wish you a lot. And I'll see you next time. In speeches, I have my 
ideas, opinions about the speeches themselves, but I'm not giving them. But I'm not giving them to you because I don't want to confuse the speakers. We have evaluators, we have special trained people for that. Now, it's crazy that Tatiana was asked to be kind. Who asked you to be kind to Maria? It's a secret. It's a secret. You asked? I, I, I asked. Okay. <laughs> right. It's a conspiracy. Alexandra and Maria has some close relationship, right? And Alexandra decided to... What? You, you, you. Some other time. People. It's all about networking. It's my time. It's my time on stage. Right. People, we, we should tell, we, we should call a spade a spade, it's okay. Your evaluation was nice. You, you didn't sugarcoat it orally. It, it was all right. As a matter of fact, I remember once I was approached by a person and, and asked to be polite to a person because, quote, you can kill the person with your evaluation, unquote. <laughs> but the person I was to evaluate was, a, was an old lady. If you're not an old lady, you shouldn't be evaluated kind of, right? The evaluator says what he has to say. And we are moving to the last evaluator, Yuri Mishnik. Nobody asked me to be kind. <laughs> so fellow Toastmasters and guests, children at the age of five start asking questions. Why the sky is blue? Why the water is wet? Why so? Why so? And some of them become older and older and keep asking questions. Do you know how we call them? The why agents. The why agents. They were some teenagers, but some become why agents for the whole life. And Annie is one of them. Because she keeps asking questions. She keeps asking questions. What is machine learning? What Yandex is all about? What is that? What is that? And the purpose of her speech tonight was to explain that, to explain that complex matter to us, to the audience, who are mostly not Y-agers, who do not constantly ask complex questions every single day. And I, I wonder, how many of you understand what machine learning is all about? Can, can you raise your hands? One, two, three, three. There was five. When <laughs> So why, why, why so? She knows exactly what machine learning is all about, but what is required to explain this knowledge to us? So first of all is to get attention, and you did pretty well of uh, getting our attention by using the following tools. Uh, you were asking questions, and you were polling us uh, about how many of you knows about it, how many of you know about it, right? So well, that was good. The second thing, that you got the examples from the audience, and, and that was done very well. Because uh, people said that Google use machine learning to get the answers for you. The Alisa speaks to you because she is uh, kind of not a hidden person, but uh, some algorithm which, which uh, ex expects something from you to, to, to say. And there were some things I think you can do better next time. First of all, when people asking questions. Please do repeat the question because it's not uh, easily heard from, from the audience what was the question is all about because it was uh, towards, towards you. So if uh, can, can someone ask me a question? What are you talking about, Yuri? What are you talking about, Yuri? I'm talking about the Anya's project. And that, that, so when I repeat the question, it's easy for you to grasp uh, the, the idea. What was the question? What was the answer? And the second thing, uh, such a question. Can, can I have you here for a second? There is a famous picture on the internet, uh, which is called how to draw an all. You know? How to draw an all. So here is the car, and it's split in, in uh, windows and tires and all that stuff. And th this is how you start to draw an all. And then you draw the rest of the all. Yeah. That, that's how we, we done. So exactly the same thing was on your slide, when you show a picture with the car, and then uh, when uh, Sasha asked you about what was the next uh, to this car. It's just a narrow network. It's just a filtering and uh, it's just a complex filter, that's it. <laughs> so pro probably that can be decomposited in a simpler manner, and that was uh, most likely the reason why people don't understand the idea of machine learning. 
So all in all, it was a good project, and uh, I look, I'm looking forward to your next project next time. One might compare Dmitry Trapeznikov's evaluation with Yuri's evaluation. Both were unusual evaluations, both were enjoyable in a way. Dmitry was more to the business, Yuri is a natural born entertainer. Both had the same problem, talking about things that are not related to evaluation of the speech. Dima has less problem with that than you, Yuri, because you, you, you Overused the time. It was it was good, entertaining evaluation, but the beginning was a little too long. Asking Sasha to demonstrate her own, to make a joke was nice, but it, it robbed you of your time. You will be disqualified when participating in evaluation contest because of that. So think about cutting the entertainment part. Keep it, but cut it. Not easy, but you can do it. I will now call the infrastructure role performers, the grammarian, the accountant, and the timer. And then I give you my holistic evaluation of the meeting on the whole. And I'll tell about some people who haven't heard from me yet. The first person I want to ask to the stage is the person who promotes us speaking correctly, learning new words, the grammarian Maxim Lucina. Thank you, dear Mr. General Evaluator, dear friends. Uh, first, with this one, because I'd like to, uh, to, do, to finish with the word of the day. There was a tough competition between Marie and Dennis, but Dennis used his time on the stage more, so four times for Dennis three times for Marie and one or, one or two times for uh, some other uh, speakers on the stage. But nevertheless it was good and thank you for using that wonderful word. Uh, now for my job as grammarian, uh, I have some, some of notes, so let me, let me share my ideas, my notes with you. Uh, first about mispronunciations. We say correct, not correct. We say think with th not sink, we do not go down, yeah? Like a ship, ship sinks, and we think. Uh, we contribute, not contribute. Uh, these small insects are uh, called ant, not ant. And uh, when we call someone, we contact them, not contact them. Uh, let's go further. Uh, we make our dream come true. We do not make them too. And two. two is um, out of uh, lack of information, not lack information. Uh, I'm hoping it's not correct. I hope, I do hope, I really hope, but not, I'm not, I'm hoping. Uh, the most part of people, just be simpler, the most people, most people. Uh, what will happen if you will read something from school? What will happen if you read without fail, of course? Uh, all the life, the whole life is better. Worse, we cannot say that. Worse and worse and worse. That's okay. Uh, more smaller, again, smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, incredible smart, incredibly smart, because it's adjective. Uh, and basically, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Is so good, we have to pay him for being the grammarian at our meeting today. Let's welcome Anton with his account report. The most speeches today were clear, especially prepared speeches, but uh, sometimes we use inappropriate words and sounds. And uh, Alexandra Guleva, you, you made more of them, about 17s, especially sound A. Uh, please pay attention. And uh, uh, the second is Rina. You 
of a new use and about seven times and also Dmitry Trapeznikov sometimes you use some air and uh, today was interesting sounds Mikhail Pakutny makes uh, sound of uh, rain of drops I think it's it's very, very interesting. <laughs> so, thank you, Mikhail. So, your speech was very interesting. Thank you for your attention. Hey, thanks for making it a little more entertaining than usual. People have their styles. Some people are joking, some people are more naturally reserved. You look, look a little formal on stage. I'm, I'm sitting there and you're speaking to us like you're teaching students in the audience. It might be your style, you may keep it, you may keep it, but think about it. You, you, you may be a little more colloquial, more natural speaking, like you're speaking to friends. Experiment with that. Might, might be a thing for you. And the last and one of the most important roles for today is the timers. Thank you much for your doing a really, really great job. Uh, just until uh, uh, evaluators. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody was pretty much on time, but uh, evaluating was uh, missing terribly. Uh, one minute, uh, even uh, somewhere around two minutes. Uh, uh, I think uh, that this can be improved. Uh, and uh, in the end, we are late for three minutes at all. I think we uh, won a little bit at table topic speaker because everybody was really, uh, really fast. And uh, we missed the last table topic speaker because uh, there was not enough time, I think. But overall, I think it was. I think. Nah. Uh, it was pretty good. For Artyom, it's your first time, right? Yeah. First row. For Artyom and those of you who will take the timer role in the future, especially for the new ones, don't be overly nice. <laughs> it's okay to tell the people. You, you don't say, well, I'm the timer, but I enjoy speeches, I will be watching all the time, and it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> well, when, when you spot someone who exceeds the time limit, you say, you're up. Don't do that. <laughs> Two minutes, you're up. Bad, bad you And in the beginning, for, for those of you who will take the role, you, you take the signals and you say, see the green light? It's okay. The yellow one, 30 seconds. Green one. <laughs> if people have to know the signals. Yeah, that's what mine is. It's, it's alright. But, but for those of you who want, who want to take the role in the future, I, I will be talking about people I've heard throughout the meeting, and if I don't know, mention you, you did okay. If I mention you, it's because either I liked what you did, or I, or I think you should have done differently. And the first person, the Toastmaster did a very fine job today, in my personal opinion. Thank you very much. Why do you think it was fine? Well, firstly, you managed to use the word of the day, which is a nice thing. And secondly, I love how you prepared. After every speech, you gave time for people to evaluate the speeches, and you offered the materials to people who didn't have them. Good job. Good thinking through beforehand. Joke master who is absent. He probably didn't want to listen to my evaluation, but I already have to leave. Well, <laughs> give my evaluation anyway. Well, he was the first time speaker, I believe, and he did a mistake you, you, you probably don't want to make. You take the stage and you don't say, now I tell you a little story, now I say my joke. Not, you go straight to doing your business. You come here, you say, I was in a train the other day, and you go with your joke. You don't need to say the few words. The table topics master did a pretty good job. Everybody is captured. He gave you the announcement that you have to write 
they choose the winner, people love to participate. It's okay. I, I want to notice, mention some table topic speakers. And George, you are the newcomer today, right? The only one newcomer, right? Do we have newcomers apart from George? No? We respect you for taking the stage. It's great. You either break or you love doing it on the stage. Whatever. But, but, but be louder when you're on the stage. Because it's difficult to hear you. Be louder, it's okay. If you love being on the stage, be louder. Vadim, right? you're not the first time on the stage, but, but you, you are new to it. You have one thing I think can be a problem. You are obviously nervous on the stage. Right now, we establish a good icon. Right now. When you were on the stage, your eye contact was chaotic. It moved all, all the time. It moved all the time. You didn't, you didn't stay with your eye contact. Think about it. It's not a terrible problem for a new speaker, but you might want to pay attention to it. That's about it. Let's meet the president, Nikolai.